cash in your chips so you can one day supersize, oh, well, supersize your business so that you can one day cash in your chips. Forgot what I was going to say. This is actually a uh, chip from a casino in Lake Superior. It is the Vista, Isle Vista Casino in Lake Superior. I don't recall ever being there. I might have been. I tend to save things, but I could have gotten it from one of my kids. Maybe they were there. Anyway, I've got a chip. I could go to that casino. I could cash it in. Cash in your chips. To cash in your chips, this idiom, this money expression. We're doing money idioms every day for the month of November. Means, of course, it's from the from gambling in the 1900s. And it means chips were exchanged for money. So you'd go in, and you still do today. I don't know. I've been to a casino for at least a decade. But I believe you still go into a casino. You pay your money. They give you a bunch of chips. And you can go and use them in the gambling games of your choice. You can put them in the slot machines. You can, I think they actually have cards now where you just stick your credit card or your card into a slot machine. And it just chucks the money right off your credit card. I don't know. I haven't been to a casino, like I said, for probably about a decade. And last time I was there, we just went there for the buffet and for dinner because it was delicious up in, uh, I think it was Mille Lacs. Up at, yeah, Lakes Mille Lacs, Band of Ojibwe Indians. So, that's in northern Minnesota where the cabin used to be about 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes from there. So cash in your chips. What does this mean? What does it mean to us as we're growing and building our business? And why do we care? It, of course, means to turn in our chips and exchange them for money or cash. Now, I think of when I hear this ex expression to sell our business, to divest ourselves of our businesses, to exit our business, to retire. I don't know about you. I I don't really have great plans for retirement. I guess most people would already say I am retired. But uh, long term, the reason we build a business, the reason we start a business is normally because we want to be able to provide for ourselves and those we love and care about now. Our needs for, you know, food and transportation and housing and safety and security. But down the road, we want to be able to still live the life that we're living now and experience the life as we've become accustomed to experiencing it. But we don't want to have to go to work every day, right? We want to have money coming in or, or resources taken care of and paid for in advance so that we can live in the lifestyle we want during our retirement years, during our elder years. Now, we could go into a big discussion about how to set that up and, and what things we should or shouldn't do. But for each and every one of us, it's going to be different. So a couple of questions today that we all need to be asking ourselves is, can my business continue without me? If I were to get in a car accident or hit by a bus tomorrow, would everything click along smoothly even though I wasn't there to be involved in the business? If the answer is no, you know exactly what you need to do. You need to immediately start putting systems and processes and people in place with the decision-making authority to make sure that your business does continue. Because guess what? If you get hit by a bus or have a sudden cardiac arrest or get in a car accident or get a diagnosis on our ill, that's when you need to know that your business is going to keep running without you so they can pay for those things that you would need in an emergency or a changing or challenging time. So are you setting your business up so that, first of all, it can run without you? Secondly, so that you've got systems and processes in place that allow it to continue no matter who is in charge and no matter what is going on in the world and the environment around you. Are you building a business or have you just created a job for yourself? I am guilty of doing both. Um, I guess I'm um, guilty, but I have done both. I have built a business that, and businesses, not one, but many, that function perfectly fine without me. And I just had an, a, a side role in the management and the leadership and the direction of those businesses. I've had businesses that couldn't function without me. And when I stopped doing them, they disappeared. So were they really businesses or were they just a job or a pastime that brought income into my life for a, a short period of time? It's, you know, the definition of a job, exchanging our time for money, um, creating value for someone else's organization. And that's why I'm a firm believer that everybody should have their own business because we all need to be creating value and multiple streams of income for ourselves and those we love and care about. So value comes into the whole equa equation. And value is, of course, a very subjective term. There's lots of ways of calculating the value of a business, and we could go into those, but it would take a rather lengthy discussion. And those in and of themselves have subjective components. 
the bottom line is the value of your business, the business you're creating, is what someone else will pay you for it. So you might think that you're creating a billion dollar business, but somebody would only ever pay you a hundred million dollars for it. So what is the value of your business? You know, there's a lot of different places that project the value of a business, but is it really the value? Would somebody pay you that tomorrow if you wanted to retire? And that's, that's what the value of the business is. And I've learned that through the real estate industry. I've learned that through buying and selling businesses that what I think the value is doesn't always matter. It matters in some way, shape or form, but it doesn't always matter. It's what will somebody pay you for the, the business or the property or the thing that you want to sell when you want to sell it. I guess that's the biggest qualifiers when you want to sell it. So are you setting things up to make sure that the value you want in exchange for your business is more than the value that somebody buying it would see and perceive as a great value for them. Because if you're not, there's work to be done. And guess what? There's always work to be done in all of our businesses. So to cash in your chips, love to know your experience with this particular idiom or expression. I am obviously not a gambler or I would have more to say about cashing in your chips. Uh, I won't even go into the discussion on that. I've never considered luck the way of achieving things. I think that Hard work, effort, planning, and things are way more important in our outcomes than luck or being in the right place at the right time. So share in the comments below what you think of this particular expression, cash in your chips. And do you have a plan for cashing in your chips and exchanging your business or leaving your business? What's your legacy plan? Are, are you going to leave your business to your children, etc.? What is your plan? Do you have one? And if not, it's a place to get started today because... We never know what's going to happen, right? The uh, the outcome of of in the future is never promised. The only thing that we're promised is right now. So make sure we're putting systems and things in place right now to create the outcomes that we want. All right, have an awesome day. I will, of course, be with you tomorrow with another money idiot.